Oh, g'day scrappers. I'm just scrapping out some hard drives at the moment and uh, thought you might be interested in having a little look. Well, I just basically wanted to have a little discussion about platinum in hard disk platters. There's a lot of um, uh, different stories. Everyone will pretty much tell you different things. Um, and there are quite a few people out there that have actually done um try to recover palladium oh, sorry platinum out of the the discs and um some will say hey there's there was no platinum to speak of or very little it just wasn't worth it well okay well if you um do a bit of extensive research on it um which most people don't seem to do um you will find that yes and no um let's have a look here so here we've got a 300 gigabyte hard drive okay it's reasonably modern and say for instance if we take a an older style hard drive uh say for instance 80 gigs 40 gigabyte hard drive yep um i agree 100 percent a lot of those discs will not have platinum inside okay now as you you know all aware that the the main metal here is aluminium and um but the thing is unlike uh, a lot of technology um in like e-waste where we've we're getting less and less precious metals um in hard drives it's actually the opposite Believe it or not, that in modern style hard drives like this 300 gigabyte drive, there actually is platinum in the discs. Okay, I know it sounds a bit weird, but it is. It's true. There is platinum in modern hard drives. Now, you know, how modern, that's what I don't really know. Um, I suspect it started somewhere around after 80 gigabyte hard drives so from about 120 gigabyte hard drives and up and once we get to about 300 gigabytes we're we're getting very close to them all being containing um pl platinum in the discs so um now it's really hard to explain this now i've I, like i said i've i've read up a lot on this subject and um you know and i'm personally convinced and uh now here's uh, another thing um laptop hard drives now the difference between a laptop hard drive platter and a regular hard drive platter is that the laptop ones are made of glass okay so here's aluminium basically you can't break it it just bends because it's predominantly aluminium here's a, a laptop hard uh, hard drive platter and it's actually glass we go to bend it and there you go disintegrated into millions of little tiny bits but there's platinum in here okay so obviously you don't want to go about breaking but i had to show one just to give you the idea now i'll just have to vacuum up the whole floor so there you go small hard drives from uh, laptops are glass platters and they all contain platinum okay so um you know, I'll, most likely I'm going to get people um, commenting saying, oh, that's not true, that's not... Well, look, just do your research. Research properly. Don't just do a quick Google search. Um, really get into the manufacturer's specifications on how they actually make hard drives. Now, I've looked at, um, you know, uh, people uh, do assaying when they take out the hard drive platters and they'll assay for... Um, uh, for precious metals well there's an even better type of assay than just 
um, going to a using a like a gold assaying machine, and that is atomic assaying. So they take the atomic profile of you know the depth of this disc. So they'll the it's like an X-ray that goes right through, and it and it every tiny little layer is uh, scanned, and they can see what's in each layer. And I've got the results to an atomic. Um, depth profile for these hard drives and modern late models say pretty much every one terabyte 500 gigabyte hard drive that you'll get will have this same profile okay now it's a probably a little bit hard to understand so you know obviously this is all this is the the image of the actual x-ray Okay, now this is using an, an atomic x-ray machine. It's like really full-on. No one's really got, you know, you know, not many people are going to have access to a machine like this. We're talking about a multi-multi-million dollar machine that does this. Okay, so we're just going by percentage here. And um, so where do we start? Okay, I suppose we, we start from right down the bottom okay and the basic structure of this is glass okay and we've got osmium sorry not osmium oxygen silicon aluminium uh, nickel chromium and zirconium okay so in the glass ones and the modern ones the base material are the ones that I just mentioned. Predominantly aluminium, but, you know, yeah, there is zirconium and stuff like that. Then we go to the next layer, one step in, and here we've got nickel and tantalum. Now, this layer is called the buffer layer, okay? Nickel and tantalum, okay? So, again, no platinum yet. We get to the third layer. It's what, um, well, again, on top of the, the buffer layer of nickel and tantalum, there is also another tantalum layer. Now, when we're talking about tantalum, we're talking about min minute, um, you know, deposits of tantalum. So it's certainly not something that will ever be, you know, recoverable in any process that we know of. Okay. And it's just not worth it. Tantalum is is okay, but it's it's not a real precious metal. It's not really expensive. Um, okay, so and here we got the seed layer. Okay, and in the seed layer, we've got carbon and titanium. Believe it or not. And then we go up to the non-magnetic layer. Okay, and this is where we start to get to precious metals. The first non-magnetic layer is actually ruthenium, okay? But again, not worth really going for um, because it's, it's like, it's a very, very, very tiny amount. But it's there. This x-ray machine picks it all up. And now, this is where we get to the good stuff. It's the magnetic data layer. This is the magnetic data layer that... that it holds the actual information okay and what we've got here is a good deposit of cobalt platinum and chromium okay platinum cobalt and chromium then the next layer again on top of the magnetic is another non-magnetic layer again ruthenium okay and um, very a uh, little bit higher deposit in this one than the ruthenium in this one and then we go above that and we've got another magnetic data layer and again cobalt platinum chromium okay and then in finishing off as a this is basically the uh, polymer the lubricant that's sort of on the surface of it and that's basically just um, cobalt and oxygen, however they work that out. 
so so again this is the depth profile of hard disk platter expressed in terms of elemental atomic percentages okay so this is the whole depth of this platter okay so and we're talking about nanometers in depth for instance the um whoop, the magnetic layer here is 10 nanometers um in in depth so we're talking about very very tiny but there is platinum in pretty much all of the glass hard drive platters the new ones in the regular size hard drives also have the similar very similar composition um you know but we've got a lot more obviously it's still aluminium so we've still got a lot more aluminium uh, a lot of people that have done tests as i said you can go to various um gold recovery forums or um wherever you go uh, there's not uh, you know many uh, groups of precious metal uh, recoverers but you know um so all their testing has pretty much been done i mean how many have all actually gone out and tested uh one terabyte hard drives or 500 gig hard drives or even 300 gig not many have got a a large sampling of really new hard drives because you know most we're not scrapping these really yet they're you know we're only scrapping the the ones that are broken and um and so no one has i don't care what anyone says no one has had a decent sample of modern um, hard drive platters that aren't mixed with old platters to actually give us a sampling so so what do we do now okay well We've got our hard drive platters now here i've been scrapping out reasonably old hard drives okay mostly 80 gig and below and we've basically got three different sizes of hard drive platters here you've got the really nice small ones the mid size and then we've got the the full size okay now they're all aluminium and they're all from regular size hard drives but once we start getting into yeah i'm really not sure on when the time i think it was something like um somewhere around 2008 somewhere between 2006 and 2008 is when most hard drive manufacturers or disc manufacturers switched from basically just aluminium to this sort of composition here with platinum so um yeah so what else can i say uh um you know if you go out and buy a whole stock of platters i guarantee that their majority are going to be just the old crappy ones but if you're scrapping them out yourself i suggest start at 120 gigabytes anything above 120 gigabytes you put them to precious metal recovery for platinum anything under 120 gigabytes put them as just aluminium and then you can just sell them as um art art material or just throw them into your aluminium okay because i'd imagine only a one or two or three percent of hard drive platters from older hard drives actually have any platinum in them unless you actually go with the you know really old big chunky hard drives um they might have put a little bit of platinum in there but we don't get that sort of stuff anyway so here um as i said i've been scrapping out a whole bunch of hard drives and i'm just um where am i here I am. Okay. So I'll, I'll scrap one out here while I'm here. Get all the parts. Now we know a lot of this is, you know, the screws and the um, stuff. A lot of it's all stainless steel. And uh, all you really need to do, what I do, as I'm undoing these, 
I just skim over and pick up any anything that's steel okay and sometimes um, stainless steel will stick to a powerful magnet like a hard drive but it, it's it, it is stainless steel if you shake it and it falls off so these ones won't fall off when you shake it so that's just steel so we can get rid of all this stuff and the rest should be either like these are obviously aluminium so these screws they're just steel okay all right so it's a little bit um hard to you know really give a good explanation because i'm not really sure how to really explain it i've done the research i've you know um i've convinced myself and then i've got the actual real data on these with the glass but i also know that the modern ones have the same composition but obviously the modern ones are still based on aluminium but they do have the same stuff okay so here we go so we've got a 300 gig hard drive here and you know to be honest i'm i'm convinced that anything from 300 and above is going to contain platinum so we want to keep these ones separate now this is where it's going to get confusing because they look exactly the same as a an old hard drive so when you go to buy these stuff so or sell this stuff like if you sell in bulk a whole bunch of discs um you know uh what's it, even if someone said to you or you went to buy them someone said oh no these are all from 120 gig or 300 gigabytes and above how are you going to know that you know you're really not going to know that the only ones you do know are the glass hard drive platters from laptops then we can just about guarantee that everyone is going to have platinum so this is only for a personal thing that when you um you scrap uh, your own hard drives if they're modern put them aside with um with your glass ones okay uh, you don't have to mix them together obviously they're going to be a little bit different in processing but um you know don't be tempted to put your old ones in with the new style hard drive because you're all you're going to do is just dilute you know what you're going to get out of this you're just going to be processing this for nothing you know if it's just aluminium what's the point so you know you've got to be a bit strict on yourself to not um you know to not uh <clears throat> just chuck stuff in it's the same kind of deal as people that pick pick um mlccs off boards you know not all mlccs are um you know well not all things that look like mlccs are mlccs so um you know so it's really hard when you go to buy them but uh so okay it's going to take uh, obviously it's a very tedious job scrapping out hard drives but um, as long as you don't build up too many to do if you just uh, scrap them out as you get them You know if they're non sellable obviously if they're 300 gig hard drives and above they're still got resale value, you know, so um, We either do this if you either you get a lot of them or you know for sure that they're They've got bad sectors and you can't actually sell them Okay And I really recommend a little sort of thing like this and put a little torx on it to do hard drives. Otherwise, you'll be unscrewing forever. And you know that a lot of them have got hidden screws and stuff like that. This one doesn't. Or does it? Yeah, I've done so many and every one is different. They're all got hidden stuff. Let me just Okay All right, now we can Drop out so again 300 gigabyte hard drive this 
you know, it may still not have platinum, but there is a better chance that this is going to have platinum than your old style. As I said, they, they're just about identical. They are identical in every way. So it's up to you. And I, yeah, I know that they're going to be people saying, no, that's not true. Um, there is no platinum and so on in, in these hard drives. So we just got four out of this one. And again, I'm going to put these aside. These go to another batch. We'll clean this off later. Then we got um, your little ones again. Glass. So we take the little boards. As you know, they they sell as hard drive logic boards. Um, personally, I wouldn't sell them. I'd rather just take the chips, take the pins. Got some nice gold pins, you know, and and all the little MLCCs and all that because you know on hard drive. Um, everything has to be spot on. So these MLCCs are going to be class one containing palladium and silver. So, and the weight of it, um, no matter how much you sell these for, if you get seven, eight dollars a pound, the weight of this is only going to be 20 cents, if that. No, nah, maybe 10 cents. So, for the sake of 10 cents, I'd rather go keep all this. But if you don't go for gold recovery, then I suppose it doesn't matter. Obviously, they they vary. You know, the the bigger hard drives, older ones. You know, we've got a smorgasbord of um, precious metal items here. So, you know, a really nice BGA chip. We've got good IC chips. We've got some tantalums, MLCCs, even thick film resistors, um, all kinds of things. So, yeah. All right. So we've got our little hard drive here. Just got to undo one more screw. Obviously, I undone a lot of screws before um, I bore you with that. Okay. So here's a 500 gigabyte, but again, it doesn't matter with laptop hard drives. And there's a hidden screw somewhere. I didn't get to it, bugger. Where is it? It should be there. Here it is. Okay, so... When I try to pry it up, because the disc is glass, I've already broken it. Okay? So it's already cracked up. But that's okay. All you need to do is you just have a little container... And you just throw all the little bits in there and you just keep building them up like that if they break um you know that's no problem because um in these case with the glass ones you know you're obviously you're not going to use these for art projects or anything like that this stuff you want you know is should be recovered for you know the pre the pl platinum should be recovered out of this you know, so even if you have a big bag just of broken up glass platters, um, there is still no question that they are the, you know, the platinum ones because they're glass and all glass platters. So this hard drive had two discs. I'm not going to bother trying to get it all out nicely just to um, give you an idea. But all we want to do, obviously, we want to lift this little part up remove the disc it'd be not much nicer if we can get um complete discs okay so i'm not really um you know sure what else i can really say you know um again people are going to argue till they're blue in the face that there is no platinum and that's just simply because they haven't they haven't um, been processing the right ones. They're processing ones that we, we are currently getting as scrap hard drives, anything up to 80 gigabytes. But once we get above that, they're, you know, they're pretty much all got platinum inside. And laptop hard drives have all got platinum inside. So don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Um, the, the, the main problem is obviously is 
most people aren't going to be able to recover the, the, the platinum out of them because, you know, most people don't know what to do with them. So if your idea is to sell um, hard drive platters, it's just going to be hard, too hard to convince people that these ones came out of a 300 gig hard drive or they came out of a 20 gig hard drive. You're not going to be able to con um, convince anyone because they're, they're exactly the same as the other ones. So how are you going to know? Um, whereas at least the laptop hard drives, you can sell these easily as platinum uh, recovery material because, you know, well, anyone that knows, knows that there is platinum. Now here we've got, we got two. So this one was a, an IBM SAS hard drive from a, um, you know, obviously a server. It's a little blade server. So there you go. Again, glass, platinum, 100%, no questions asked. Yeah, I really don't know what else to um, say on the subject because, um, but, you know, I've been, you know, thinking about it and, you know, a lot of people are scrapping them out and, Geez, if you're scrapping out laptop ones and you're selling them as glass platters for decoration or whatever, um, there is platinum inside them, no doubt about it. I've, you know, we've got the the stats right here in front of you, so no question about that. It's the only question is, at what stage did they start putting platinum in the discs of modern hard drives? Here is a 160 gig hard drive. I'm not sure. You know, I'm assuming, you know, so 160 gig, this was manufactured um, 2005, around there. So that's really about the time that I'm thinking that in my research looks like when they started putting platinum in hard drive platters. 2005, um, and uh, most certainly anything from 2008, We've got, we've got platinum in them. So, all right, guys. Well, I'm just going to keep scrapping. So we're here, 160 gig hard drive, virtually a nothing on this board. Uh, so no value here. But these discs, it's all changed now. So forget about the old style, you know. And yes, I agree. The old ones don't have platinum. Maybe one in a million might have a little bit of platinum in there because the manufacturer decided to do so. But everything modern is going to have this configuration of, you know, metals inside. And so we've got two layers of platinum. So we've got cobalt, platinum, and chromium. Cobalt, platinum, chromium. And they're both um, about 10 nanometers in thickness. And... Also, ruthenium, titanium, uh, nickel, tantalum, aluminium, obviously, zirconium, carbon, silicon, sodium, uh, potassium, and oxygen. <laughs> so, pretty much everything's there. And, um, yeah, I hope this was, you know, of some kind of interest to you guys. Um, you know... Uh, other things when you we're scrapping out hard drives uh, I showed you so we've got the boards that we keep the about the best boards for precious metal recovery for yourself they're very light so I suggest depopulating them yourself you get um we'll get a lot of these reader arms uh, you can keep these uh, depending on how far you want to go if you can keep them complete like this with the whole kit and caboodle, they, you know, these ones will actually, you know, might be useful for someone down the track for something, who knows, I've cut myself. Um, but otherwise, you can always scrap them out. You get this little bit of copper. You know, we've got, might have gold plating sometimes in these. Um, inside these reader arms, the little tips might have, a um, some kind of precious metal I can't remember what it was it might be rhodium or something like that um, yeah so we get um, reader arms so I keep the reader arms separate and I just 
stockpile them. Uh, oh, obviously, uh, hard drive magnets in a lot of the older ones. They're huge, gigantic. Um, and talk about, these are like superpower magnets. Um, you know, they, they come in all kinds of sizes, but a lot of the older ones, like uh, 40 gig and under 40 gig hard drives, you know, you get some real super duper strong hard drives, um, magnets. <laughs> and so strong. These ones, because they're so big and thick, you can't actually pull them apart. Nah, that's impossible. So, don't know what to really do with them. I mean, you can, sure, you can sell them on eBay in lots of 10 or 20. Um, but these really big ones, because they're, you know, the modern style hard drives are a little bit smaller. So, you know, these ones are actually good to keep. You got a you know really nice thick magnet in here. There's a few really real chunky ones that are just out of this world. So that's from a more modern one, but that's that's a good one too because the depth of the magnet there. And um, some people like to just remove the magnet and sell the magnets, you know, individually. Uh, I recommend leaving this plate um, and selling them with the plates. Yeah. You know, and you always hear people, oh, you know, be careful, you can pinch yourself and all that. I mean, geez, you know, if you're worried about, you know, a little pinch, it's not going to kill you. And, you know, I I play with them all the time and I don't really pinch myself. You've got to be pretty clumsy, I reckon. Anyway, they're hard drive magnets. Uh, the other thing that we get is obviously the little motors. So the ones that are complete and got everything intact again you can keep these because you know well you might be able to sell them in bulk lots build up about you know a hundred of them or so and, and sell them and someone's going to probably want them but I'll, I'll just keep them for now because uh, years down the track this kind of stuff might um might be sought up obviously we've got our um, cast aluminium casing that we can also sell as cast really good quality aluminium this is and if you're actually interested in melting aluminium and making ingots or anything like this these are actually probably about you know one of the best kinds of raw aluminium you can use for your own projects um, aside from obviously extruded heat sinks um, yeah, that's it guys. That's all I can really um, tell you and obviously uh, a lot of these are either um, stainless steel or steel. Uh, a lot of times they're actually double, double layered and so get a magnet. So this one here is stainless steel because it's non-magnetic but some you'll get magnetic and basically what it is There'll be one side that's stainless and the, the other side will be um, steel. So, uh, I don't think, okay, no. I don't have a, well, here's an example where I split one apart. So, it was magnetic, but this layer is actually aluminium and I just peeled it off the, the steel part. And still created a bit of a bit of better value all right guys well there we go old hard drives under 80 gig and below definitely don't have any platinum modern hard drives i think 120 gig but maybe 240 or 250 gig and above you can be safe that they're going to have platinum and all your laptop hard drives with the glass platters well that's exactly what I've just showed you there all the glass ones have platinum so no dramas about that so there you go up to you 
you know, the chances of you actually trying to recover from um, platinum out of these ones, the modern ones, probably slim. So, you know, don't really worry about it. Um, you know, if, if you, you know, most of the hard drives are going to be old ones. Uh, so, you know, it's really up to you. But for me, I prefer that anything now, from now on, 300 gig and above, I automatically put these in aside as platinum recovery. All right, guys, well, keep scrapping, have fun. Hope that was a little bit interest to you. I'll catch you next time soon.